In this tutorial we're going to create a two-dimensional pattern and then we're going to deploy it across a three-dimensional surface. So I'll start by just drawing two curves in my front view to make a surface. And then we'll go to our perspective view. I'll just move this one over. I'll loft these two curves together. And then let's bring this surface into Grasshopper. And then now I can hide all this. And so the next thing we want to do is actually subdivide the surface so we have uh, points in which to deploy this pattern we're going to create. So the first thing I want to do is ISO trim um, and um, subdivide the surface. So ISO trim is here and we'll plug the surface and then we need to go to math domain. We want to divide the existing domain. So we'll plug our surface into I and then that'll be our new domain. So we need a slider for the U and the V. So I'll do a slider, two is less than, and let's go pretty big on this one since we're creating a pattern. Um, so I'll plug these both into here. And I'll just increase those. Maybe I'll keep it pretty low at the beginning and then we can increase it later um, depending on how dense we want that pattern. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put the pattern in the middle of these cells. So I'll find the area of the surface, of each of the cells in the surface. If I put the area component in there, it'll give me the centroid of each of those. And now what we want to do is put a, let's put a circle, CNR, on each of these centroids. So we'll use the centroid as the location for that circle and then we'll change the radius. Let's do a radius. One is less than 20.00. And actually, let's go even smaller. So let's go zero is less than 5.000. So we'll have a lot of um, uh, decimal places to work with here. So that'll give us a lot of uh, variation. So you can see if we increase that, it's now putting these circles on that surface. Now you can see the problem is the circles are all parallel to the XY plane and I want them to be perpendicular to every location that they're at at that surface. So what we need to do is calculate the normal to the surface at each of these points. To do that we can find the closest point to that um, centroid. So we'll find surface closest point and then we can also evaluate the surface at that point. So if we do an evaluate surface, we can evaluate surface at each of those points. So this is going to be the surface we're evaluating. The centroids are going to be the points that we're evaluating. And then of course those points are on this surface. And then we want to plug in this UV of the point into the UV uh, at the surface. And that will give us planes at each of those locations. So the next thing we can do is use the plane normal. So a normal um, at each of those points and the points are going to be these centroids where we want that normal plane and then we can use the normal that's coming out of the evaluate surface to um, orient those, those points to that surface. You can see it gets a little cluttered and that's because I have so many subdivisions so if I just reduce these let's say I go to 5 to 5 just so, so we can figure this out um, at a much smaller level here you can see I have a plane at each of those points now so um, I can turn off some of these previous ones and we can just look at the the plane so maybe we go up to 10 um, and 10 and then start there um, those planes are still a little distracting so I can go ahead and hide the plane and we'll turn back on our circle so now that we have this plane we can actually use that normal that's coming out of there as for the normal for each of these circles so you see now each of those circles is now oriented to the surface um, parallel uh, to the surface and perpendicular to the normal at that point on the surface. So now we can make this a little more interesting. So we have these circles on the surface, but let's say we want to change the radius. It's not always the same radius. We'll talk about attractors next, but there's a lot of ways. Basically, whenever you have a slider that's standing in for a parameter for a certain value, you can do a lot with that. You can introduce multiple numbers, you can do attractors, all these other kind of conditions so you don't have to stick with just the one number. So in this case, let's go ahead and create random numbers. So I'm going to do the random component and what we need to do now is find the um, number of random numbers we need. So we need to figure out and calculate how many circles do we have. And the easy, easiest way to do that is to use multiplication 
and multiply this number by that number and that gives us the number of um, we have at any time so if I increase this it's going to still multiply and still be an accurate number for how many random numbers we need so I'll plug that into the number and then the next thing we need is a range so right now my radius is point two five five but we want to we want the random a number generator to generate a random number between a minimum and a maximum value. So to do that we can construct a domain um, and we'll do the construct domain under here. It's the very first one and this will be a domain between two numbers. So I can just copy one thing I like to do is I'll first set maybe how many of these I want. So let's say we want 30 in that direction and then 40 in that direction let's say. Um, so now I can say um, my my smallest radius, how about we make it 0.1 and then the biggest radius 0.5 let's say, so 0.1 to 0.5. So I'll copy this and then I'll make this one 0.5 and then I'll copy this and I'll make this one 0.1. So that'll be the range within the range of numbers that this random generator produces. So that'll be my A value. I can then plug that into the R value. And then now that I have that, you, it's generating a bunch of numbers. We can see if we pull a panel out here. These are all the random numbers that are being generated. And I can use those as a radius instead of this radius. And you can see um, it then randomizes the radius of all those circles. So we can increase these. Obviously, I could go to point 0.8, and that'll give me more of the larger numbers. Um, I could also increase the U and V count. But so that's a really nice way to produce kind of randomized pattern on a surface which two, that's two-dimensional. Another thing you can do is random reduce. So we can, now that we have all of these um, circles on the surface, we can actually reduce and get rid of some of them randomly. So you can plug the list into the random reduce and then let's use a division component. So we'll divide and let's divide our total number. So these are all the circles we have on the surface by another number. So I'll do a slider that goes from zero less than five, let's say. So this will reduce it won't reduce at all if it's zero, it'll reduce by uh, nothing if it's one, but if I do two, it'll reduce half of them. And so we can plug that into the random reduce, and you'll see that it actually removes half of those circles. So I can preview off the original circles, and then if I want to reduce even more, I can reduce less actually, so a third of them only, a quarter of them only. And so that's kind of a nice way to produce a pattern, but also add some larger variations within the pattern, like these kind of voids that will start to appear. And then of course you could always um, trim the surface with these if you bake them and then create these holes in the surface.